Majority of people got the first column right. Handful got a few things wrong, and if there's something in column one you're unsure why you were wrong, I want you checking with me. There's a few problems in column two that I'm going to go over in detail. So negative 11, B, D, C, D. Uh, and again, if people missed this by choosing A, they forgot the negative times negative rule, right? Uh, number six is B. Seven is four. Eight is A. Again, if there's anything in column one, you're unclear about why it is what wrong. And that means you're going to look at the right answer and go back through and check and see if you can figure out your mistake. You will check with me after. Column two, we're going to do the majority of these as we go because a significant number of people missed most of them. Ironically, the problem that almost everybody got right was the word problem. Number nine is B. This would be 7B plus 3 minus 4B equals, I'm not leaving myself room, 3 minus 3B minus 12. 7b and negative 4b is going to be 3b plus 3 is equal to 3 minus 12 is going to be negative 3b minus 9. I'm going to add the 9 to both sides. Canceling that and I'm going to subtract the 3b from both sides. That's going to give me this canceled over here. I get 12 is equal to negative 6b. Divide by the negative 6, we get negative 2. The majority of people who got this wrong chose A. And I think they saw the 3b and the negative 3, and they just didn't finish over here to realize they were getting a negative 6b. Number 10 is C. When I look at number A or letter A, I realized right away it's got infinite solutions because I've got exactly the same thing on both sides of the equation. I skipped B because A is not going to be equal to A plus negative A plus 2. If I add this A to both sides, I'm going to get 2A is equal to 1. And I'm looking for something that has no solutions, and this has a solution. Right? It is C, and I kind of stopped there. I didn't even check D, but I checked C. And I, if you have a, po a plus positive 2 equals A minus 2, they are not the same. But to clarify, you can just go and try to solve for A. If I subtract 2 from both sides, and I subtract A from both sides, A minus A is 0. Negative 2 minus negative 2 is negative 4. Those are not equivalent to each other, so it has to be C. Again, most people got problem 11 right, so I'm not going to do it for you. But if you look at the answer and can't figure out your mistake, check with me later. Uh, number 12, I'm solving for L. So P is equal to... And why do I know it's L? Because that's an actual formula. This is the formula for perimeter. Perimeter is equal to 2 times the length plus the width. And the first thing I did, it's not the first thing you have to do, but I divided the 2 from both sides. You could have distributed it, but you'd later have to divide it. So I was trying to save myself a step. And I end up with P over 2 is now equal to length plus width. I'm trying to solve for just length, so I'm going to subtract width from both sides. That means P is going to be over 2 minus W is equal to the length, which makes B the right answer.
give myself a little room here to work on problem 13. I'm solving this one for B. A is equal to B minus 4 over C. I'm solving for B. First thing I want to do is multiply by the reciprocal of that C. And right now it's a 1 over C, so the reciprocal is going to be C over 1. So I end up with AC, I like to put them in alphabetical order, is equal to B minus 4. We're going to add the 4 to both sides. So it ends up being C because AC plus 4 is equal to the B. And this cancels. Now I know when we took this quiz, we had only worked for a couple of days on absolute value equations. They will be on the chapter test on Tuesday. It's really pretty simple to go through this test and figure out what parts of the book this is. This is where 2-6 starts. This is 2-5. The other things would be 2-4, 2-3, right? This is going to be part of your studying. If you're unsure why you miss things, you should be checking with me today, potentially watching videos from prior lessons, maybe going to Khan Academy and doing some studying. But let me solve these last two, and I feel like I'm running out of room, so I'm going to do them on scratch paper next to it. So I've got solved the absolute value of 2x plus 6 equals 8. First thing I want to look at is the absolute value isolated on one side of the equation, and it is. There's nothing else with it. I don't have to add, subtract, multiply, or divide. That means I'm going to take what's in the absolute value out and have it equal to its negative value and its positive value. So this side doesn't change. But the right side does, because absolute value could be whatever's in here could have been negative equal to the positive distance. So I've set up my two versions. Oh, thanks. Sorry about that. Set up my two versions. Minus 6, minus 6. I'm going to get 2x is equal to negative 14. If I divide a negative 14 by a positive 2, I'm going to get x is equal to negative 7. I do the same action on this side, and I get 2x is equal to 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1, so I get x is equal to 1. I'm going to go back and look at my multiple choice options. Negative 7, positive 1 is b. And finally, this one is going to take a little bit more room because the absolute value is not by itself on its side of the equation. That minus 3 is there. So we need to first add the 3 to both sides. I have to wait until the absolute value is all by itself on one side of the equation before I can make it equal to its positive and negative value. And I'm dealing with 8 again. So I'm going to do x plus 4 is equal to negative 8, and x plus 4 is equal to positive 8. Subtract the 4 from both sides, x equals negative 12. I could practically stop right here, because there's only one multiple choice that has a negative 12. But I'm going to continue and make sure that my other one equals a positive 4, because that will make me feel more comfortable that my answer is right and I didn't make a mistake. And the answer is D. I had it right the first time. 